Wow, numbers are in Canelo versus Plant. And it's payday. You won payday. I know that. Payday. They're saying this made a lot of money. Great on Canelo and Plant. I'm going to give you guys the numbers. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego. And I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel. Listen, I don't know how you found my video, but somehow, some way you made it. Please help others arrive at the content. Throw a like on the video. Thumb up. Takes a couple seconds. It's free, and it helps others. Appreciate you. Let's go. Now, Lance Pugmire, boxing reporter. He was the first that kind of came out with this. And I'll put his link in the description. It says, an industry source tells me that the Canelo versus Caleb Plant fight projections to it projects to generate 800,000 domestic pay-per-view buys. So right here in US only. It's not including other territories that might have had licensing to to sell this fight or whatever. 800,000 domestic. That's a number certainly to thrill Showtime Sports PBC staff and Canelo in his first pay-per-view appearance since the 2018 HBO second bout against Triple G. Wow. That's good, man. Shout out to listen, first of all, shout out to Canelo. Hey they I was born ready. It was a great fight. So I'm really happy because these moments, this is where it all makes sense because the business made sense with the boxing. And what I mean by that is sometimes we have big fights and then people are left disappointed or you know, whatever the situation is. But now we're in a situation where the fight i enjoyed the fight i thought it was entertaining hopefully you guys enjoyed it too they will be airing a rerun or the re-air of the fight before the david benavidez fight this saturday so if you have showtime and you didn't order the pay-per-view want to watch the full fight or record it on your dvr you should be able to do that now again this is one of the times where it was a great fight it was a historic fight and a meaningful fight and canelo alvarez defeated caleb plant via 11th round decision so if these numbers rise or hold up these are great numbers he sold right around this to fight Cotto. he fought i think it was like 900,000 900,000 when he fought Cotto. so it was just under a million these numbers are very comparable so it goes to show you that canelo being back with the network like showtime being on premier boxing and i know old media is going to get mad they don't want to hear this you have a lot of people who randomly hate al Heyman and they're anti-pbc but the metrics in the men lie, women lie numbers don't. The metrics are making sense. Now they said Canelo got a career high guarantee of $40 million plus back end money or whatever their, their agreement was. Now it makes sense. The bad side. So there's no real bad side for boxing, but there's a bad side for the zone boxing. Here's the thing. Canelo did about six fights on the zone. Rocky Fielding, Danny Jacobs, fights like Kovalev, Sergey Kovalev and you had Caleb Smith, you had average eardrum, Yildrum, and you had Billy Joe Saunders. Canelo, somewhere along the line, he wasn't happy with his deal. There was imperfections with his deal, and he sued to get out of his deal and became a free agent. So that was a big move for him and Eddie Reynoso, his trainer and manager, right? And he got out of his deal with Golden Boy, no longer works with them. He's a free agent. And he got out of his DAZN deal, which gave him the freedom to fight against Caleb Plant on Showtime Network, a network he had previously fought. I believe Edislani Lada was on that network. And in the fight with uh, maybe Angulo, you know, those were probably his Showtime fights. And Mayweather. I think Mayweather. I'm pretty sure the Mayweather. I got to look it up. But yeah, I had to be because the Robert Guerrero was the Mayweather. And then he fought him after. So the Robert Guerrero, I think, was the first fight of the Showtime deal. So yeah, these are his Showtime fights. And then he went back to the network and he's producing 800K in, in today's market in a pandemic. These are amazing, excellent numbers. Nobody could say anything. So it was a great fight, great buildup. And he had a great dance partner. We can't leave out Caleb Plant in this equation. Caleb put up a hell of a fight, triumphant, valiant effort, came up short. Canelo was a better man. Canelo's elite. And he got him out of there. But it was a fun fight an amazing buildup and Showtime did a good job, you know, the all access. But again, this is the bad side. The bad side is really just old media because old media, they've told you something quite different. While on my channel, I told you that seeing Canelo face somebody that people thought had a chance or was a threat, especially some of these American styles, which would put him in a difficult fight. And that was apparently true. 
because the moment he fought an American guy that some people thought could win, the numbers rose. Old media told me that Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Smith were the best super middleweights. And on my channel, I never agreed to that. They're solid fighters, but Billy Joe Saunders really hadn't done anything in that weight class. Yes, he was a champion, but there's a lot of guys that are champions based on politics. Billy Joe Saunders failed a VADA drug test and became a champion in, I believe, his first fight at 168 after failing a test, right? So how did he get that opportunity? How is he even in line if he failed a, a test in recent memory? Again, politics. Make a couple calls, grease someone's palm, whatever. And that's how he became champion. So for Canelo to lift the belt, yeah, he's lifting off a champion, but he's not like an established champion. Billy Joe Saunders was an established champion in the previous division where they didn't fight at middleweight. So yeah, Canelo lifted the belt off of him and he whooped him up and he broke his orbital, sent him to retirement. But that was very predictable for me. And that's exactly how I called it. And that's what happened, right? And then the Caleb Smith fight. Caleb Smith, he's cool, but his best win, first of all, they said he had a four week camp. And his best win in general, his best win was George Groves, a guy who Carl Frotch stopped twice years before. And also he got dropped, or Badu Jack, Badu Jack fought him and dropped him. And no one even made a big deal when Badu Jack beat him. But then Caleb Smith beat him, and everyone said he's the greatest. So it goes to show you. Now, the reason this is a bad look for DAZN is because, again, old media put out these fallacies and DAZN, they had all these theatrics and the Canelo fight did sit there 16,500 people, right? Look, here's the actual number. 16,586 in the MGM in Las Vegas. And I'm going to show you this is just going to be simple mathematics, right? 16,586. We got the number, boom. Highlight and, and get that up. Right there, boom. 16.5, right? Off of 16.5, so a crowd of 16,500 people. So we'll just say 16K. Off of 16K people in attendance, which is sold out for that venue in the configuration, he sold 800,000 and off of those 16,000 people that attended, his live gate was 18 million. And I've already made videos about this, but according to all the sources and information, they said he did a crazy live gate, right? Uh, let's see if I can find it. Looks like Canelo and Caleb Plant generated $17 million gate in a sellout, I'm told. And then he later updated and said a second source now tells me Canelo Sweet Hand Plant's gate number are actually 18 million plus. So he made Canelo versus Plant did over 18 million of live gate to, for that fight. So there was obviously a huge level of promotion and interest in the fight and the historic uh, element of it and the dance partner, etc. And people say, oh, it's just because of history. No, that's false. Because I went to Terrence Crawford versus Ndongo and not a knock on top rank or Terrence Crawford, but it didn't generate this type of gate. And it was in Omaha where Crawford is from. And that was a historic fight, right? That was a historic fight with all the belts and undisputed. Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor was for all the belts and it didn't generate this. Usyk versus uh this in the super series world boxer super series didn't generate this live gate so you can't just relegate it to say oh it's a historic fight so everyone tuned in it's the star power of both fighters the build up the animosity the slapping each other it's the whole culmination of things which made this a success but back to the actual numbers off of 16,500 people they generated a gate of 18 million plus. So the downside for DAZN is DAZN has been the one that's been working with them for six fights and investing and paying similar guarantees really close. Uh, in this fight, Canelo got 40 million guarantee, but DAZN was giving him 36.5 and he wasn't producing these type of numbers at a cheaper price point and he wasn't doing 800,000 
pay-per-view buys, right? Even though their numbers didn't officially come out, right? He's doing 800K at a higher price point and off of 16,500 people, he's doing an $18 million gate. Meanwhile, they hyped it up and said, oh, he, he Canelo Saunders broke Muhammad Ali's record. This is the gate. The gate, they said there were 70,000 people in that fight, in that room, in that venue, in Texas, and the gate was 9,002,920. So simple math. Would you rather have 77 or 71,000 people in attendance and do a gate of 9 million or have a double that and have an $18 million gate and at a higher price point, sell 800 K pay-per-views 18 million off of 16,000 attendance or have all these people in attendance and make less than half of that in terms of the live gate profit. So I told you once again, the great ego Stradamus strikes again, the profitability, the profitability is, is different. The Saunders fight old media told you this is what people wanted, but why did it, why did Canelo versus plant more than double, more than double the live gate with way far fewer people? I mean, you can't make this make sense. So this is an L for DAZN because they spent all this time with Canelo and overpaid him for fights that weren't producing these types of numbers. It's that simple. And this is business. So it's all about numbers. The numbers are adding up for Showtime. They should be elated and ecstatic because these are great numbers. Great event. People are satisfied with the fight. You pay Canelo handsomely. But in return, they both give you a great build up. Canelo spoke English. He did his promotional things. He was a true professional. He gave, um, he shook the team's hand, Caleb Plant's team's hand on the way in. He delivered a sensational knockout. Caleb Plant played his part perfectly. He was the B side. Some people didn't think he had a chance. Some people thought he had a chance. He played his role. Some people would say he's a villain role. He was outspoken. And the two fought like men. We got a conclusion. And that was that was it. And then the numbers reflect what it was. A great buildup with Showtime and PBC and a great fight. And it's funny because you have old media who are advocating that Canelo fight Triple G. And Triple G has been MIA, inactive. And just to add insult to injury with the old media, they're saying nobody want to see Caleb Plan and he sucks and he's soft and sorry. Just by way of contrast, so you guys can understand and compare the two. Canelo versus Triple G 2, this was the live gate. Just so for comparison state sake, they did a gate of 23 million and that's Triple G and that was a, a rivalry where they already had the first fight. The first Triple G fight, the it did a little bit more. The, the live gate was 27 million. So you can't make these numbers up. Caleb Plant does an $18 million plus gate with Canelo Alvarez being a great dance partner. And then these are just under what the live gate he did for Golovkin part two, which was a sequel with a lot of drama because Canelo by the second fight had failed the drug test and they had to reschedule it. And it's off of about the same amount of tickets sold, 16, um, 16, 7, 3, 2. But the other difference is the, the Caleb Plant fight happened at the older MGM building as opposed to this fight happened at the T-Mobile, which is probably more expensive. So Showtime is doing good business. They use the older MGM, which is still historic in boxing. They use that building, which is probably cheaper than the newer building, you know, or Legion Stadium. And then they had a great fight and sold, sold about the same amount of tickets. And it all worked out for everybody. The only people it didn't work out for, in my opinion, is DAZN because they overspent and never got these type of results with Canelo in any of those fights. Simple business. Let me know how I did in this video. Subscribe if you like. And I'm out.